going to talk about being mindful, about how that golden rule that we talk about, do unto others as you have them do unto you, can return to you tenfold. If you put out love, it'll come back to you 10 times. And that's so important. And we often lose sight of it. We don't, we don't see that. We think, well, it's a good thing to, to be good to other people. No, if you're good to other people, it comes, just unloads on you. All this stuff comes back. If you love, you get loved. And there's, it's such a wonderful thing. So wisdom <clears throat> is the ability to set aside your fears and choose instead to be grateful. That's why we talk about what are we grateful for? We want to think all the time. We want to be mindful of what we're grateful for. So I'd like to look at the um, lessons that are hidden in the news that happens around us. And this isn't about following the local news. Let's see, it's a billboard along the highway say, check out the local news. Yeah, the local news this morning, six people got shot in Sacramento last night. And, and uh, there were, um, Russians were apparently executing civilians with their hands tied behind their back as they were leaving parts of the Ukraine. Well, that's the, the news you get on the local news. That's evil. Sounds terrible. People say to me, well, is the world getting better or is it is getting worse? It seems to be getting worse. It's just, just terrible what's going on. It's all in how you decide to look at it, whether it's getting better or it's getting worse. So over the last two months, we've been witness to two rather earth-shaking events, which overarched that local news. First was the invasion of the Ukraine by Putin's Russian army. And the other is Will Smith being violent on TV, on international TV, slapping Chris Rock. Now we've all looked at these pieces of news and we've, we've said, oh, that shouldn't have happened. Ah, oh, that's terrible. Oh, I can't stand that. There's lessons in there for us. And what are those lessons? And if we look at the news, looking for the lesson that's in each one of the pieces of struggle and and events out there that, that we think, well, why'd that happen? So we could learn. That's why those things happen. Both of those totally inappropriate actions, the invasion of the Ukraine and slapping Chris Rock on the TV. I like both of those guys and here they are fighting in front of me. Um, <clears throat> they judged what they wanted, what Putin wanted. The Ukraine was, was becoming democratic. He didn't like that. It's supposed to be a communist a little puppet state alongside Russia. It's not supposed to become a democratic part of the West. Why are they doing that? I need to stop that. Now, what's what Putin was thinking. And with Will Smith, Chris Rock was making a joke about his wife and he didn't like that. So he you know, thought I better punish um, Chris Rock and Putin thought I better punish the Ukraine. Both of them, taking vengeance, revenge into their own hands. There's a Bible verse that says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Well, Putin wants to return to the way it was. I gotta put my glasses on so I can find my notes here. So you get to have my glasses today. He wanted to return to the way it was. The former Soviet Union controlled the Ukraine. It was a little puppet state. And Will Smith felt his wife has been made fun of and he didn't like that. And both of these powerful men have been elevated by their society to the pinnacle of success. Putin is the president of Russia. And Will Smith was elected to the status of best actor for 2021. I mean, you know, when the Academy, when you get the Oscar, you're the, you're the best, you're the hottest, you're the top of the world. But then both of these men choose the path of self-destruction because of their incorrect view of reality and they're valuing what they did not have higher than what they already had. They had a lot to be grateful for. I mean, if I was winning the Oscar, I'd be pretty happy. You know, that's that I'd be grateful. Wow. I'm winning the Oscar. But instead they were looking at something that bothered them, something that was irritating them. And then they took inappropriate action, both of them. So what can we learn? 
instead of being grateful and being gifted by the universe uh, and, be, and feeling gifted by what the universe had given them, they tried to force another result. Instead of saying, oh, this is so great, I'm president of the Soviet Union or Russia. This is so wonderful. I can go anywhere I want in the world. I got lots of money. I can have fun. I can just be. Instead, I got to fix the Ukraine. There's something wrong with the Ukraine. Well, why look for something that you don't like when there's so much that you could like? So both of them took inappropriate action. It, it appeared at the moment to them to be the right action. So they took this action. Neither man was able to see what they could lose by acting on their ego impulse. They were both on the world stage. I mean, he went up there to slap Chris Rock, Will Smith did. On international television, the whole world watches the Academy Awards. Everybody wants to know who got the Oscar. And the best actor, the guy winning the award for best actor goes up and does something really stupid like that. And why? Putin, he pushed his country into being ostracized by the rest of the world. In crippling economic sanctions have been brought against Russia and against the Russian economy. And unfortunately, the Russian economy isn't, it's only as big as the state of Texas's economy. Texas economy is as big as Russia. And that's not as big as California even. And so here this little Texas sized country monetarily says, I'm gonna tell the rest of the world what we're gonna do. Well, when the rest of the world brings economic sanctions against a place the size of Texas, it turns it into a third world, no place. That's what it does. They've had 15% inflation already this week in the Soviet Union, or not Soviet Union, Russia. I'm gonna say Soviet Union because for all my life, that's what it was called. In Russia, they have 15% inflation. Interest rates at the banks, like for home loan, have gone to 20% already. Well, here we can go down and get a loan at four and a half percent right now to buy a house. But no, in Russia, you wanna, you wanna buy something, you get 20% to borrow the money. One, you pay them back every year, one fifth of the money. That's insane. And all of that was caused by his action of invading the Ukraine. He's brought against the economic force of the rest of the world. He's just destroying his country. And all this could have been known. Putin could have known this was gonna happen. He, he took the, the Crimea from Ukraine back in 2014 and we put sanctions against him. And he knew that that's what we would do again. It could all be known in advance, the consequences of what he wanted to do. If he'd just been calm and taken a look at the reality that was around him and thinking about what other people would think about what he did. Unfortunately, he thought he could control what other people thought. He pretty much tells what the, the news is going to say in Russia. And he sort of controls public opinion by having a, a, a state censorship system. And so he thought he could also control what the rest of the world thought ain't gonna happen. He doesn't control our newspapers. And finally, his forces are losing the war badly because they're using 50 year old technology trying to fight a war against our modern stuff. We have supplied the Ukraine with, with wonderful weapons. They, they just see a tank and they fire a, a missile at it from their shoulder. Boom, tank is gone. And they've been doing this to all of the Russian uh, equipment. They've, they just, the, the Russians can't, can't win this war any way they try. Okay, so shortly, Putin won't be allowed to travel outside of Russia. And if he does, they'll, try, they'll capture him and try him for war crimes. All his financial assets, which he deposited in the Russian banks, those Russian banks redeposited in Western banks where they can get a better interest rate than they can in Russia. And so his money and all of his assets, more than half of it got frozen where it is in the rest of the world. He can't ever spend it now. So his invasion of the, the uh, Ukraine cost him personally about $330 million. That's a lot of money throw away, go, I, I gotta, you know, I'm just going to do this thing. Cost 330 million. But to do that, to, 
to do this, to take care of his fear, he lost all of that. Will Smith, on the other hand, has worked 30 years to be known as the guy who's, who, who sees how the world works, how our persistence and our patience can lead to something really special. And he's reached that success through his own patience. And it's very well illustrated in that, that uh, movie, The K King Richard. If you haven't seen it, you should. It's about the two tennis stars, Venus and her sister, Sabrina, and how they've won world champion tennis. There were never any black tennis stars before these two girls. And they've become the best tennis players in the world because of their dad's persistence. And Will played their dad in the movie. Um, and for that, he won best actor. He won the best actor before he blew it and slapped Chris Rock in the face. But taking revenge on Chris Rock for this, for the inappropriate remarks that Chris, Chris is, you know, he made a remark. Um, he was making a joke out of a medical condition that Will Smith's wife has, sort of laughing at the guy in the wheelchair. I mean, that's not, that's not appropriate humor. And so Chris, was, uh, Chris Rock was making a mistake when he did that. There's good reasoning on both sides for why Will wanted to slap him. But he did it on international TV in front of the world. And the world doesn't like violence, no matter what. Even if the violence is deserved, you really need to hit the guy. But, you know, um, it's, not gonna, it's not gonna wash with the rest of the world. Maybe he and Chris could go in the back room and punch it out, but not in front of everyone else. It's inappropriate. So Smith has worked 30 years to come to a position where everybody listens to what he has to say and just blows it in two seconds and taking revenge on Chris Rock for those inappropriate remarks, Will Smith now faces losing the Oscar that he just won. And his other movies currently in the works, and there's four of them, Fast and Loose for Netflix, Bad Boys 4 for Sony, Emancipation for Ad Apple TV, and his own movie company was making I Am Legend 2. All of those movies have been postponed. They've all been stopped. And how many million dollars would he make on each one of those movies? They're stopped. Probably not going to get restarted. We watched other actors blow it and TV shows and everything else that were involved in get stopped. And that's what's happening to this guy. For two seconds worth of, I'll show you, Chris Rock, how many millions of dollars and all of the prestige he's built up for himself, blown, gone away. And why? Because he wasn't grateful. He also damaged the people that his movie was supposed to celebrate, the two tennis stars. They didn't, he had a speech prepared. He's gonna talk all about that. And he's gonna tell the story about how this persistence and, and, and stuff works and believing in yourself. And instead he's apologizing for his big mistake. So he, he blew the, the time he could speak at the Oscars, he blew, all of this, not helping people. So the price for a two second slap on the face against an irritant, he's already lost millions of dollars he would have garnered from those movies. And just prior to that, he was on top of the world. Best actor, making millions, well loved by his audience. He has everything going his way. And so did Putin, president, all that money, Nobody can push him out of being president. He, he runs the country, he owns everything. Well, why not instead just be grateful for what you already got? Not something else you need, not something else you desire. And the problem is what I call our desire to acquire. That's what clouds our view. We all do the same thing Will and Putin have been doing. We often think, if I could just have this, a new car, a new job, a new house, a new boyfriend, a new girlfriend, oh, then everything would be fine. That'd solve everything. So we go out and we figure out how to do that, how to get the new car, the new boyfriend, the new girlfriend. We get the new house. 
And when we get tired of that new junk that we got, new set of skis, we have to rent a storage to put them in. So now we've got the problem of having to rent a storage and come up with money every month to, to rent the storage to put those new set of skis we're never going to use, put them in there for storage so we won't lose them because after all, we bought them and we don't want to lose our new set of skis and we don't want to lose our new car. We, all of a sudden, these things that are going to solve our life are a problem. We didn't have the problem before. Now, back in the old King James Bible, St. Paul said, and I forgot where he said it. I didn't have time to look it up. St. Paul said, in whatever circumstances you find yourself, in whatever circumstances you find yourself, be ye, that means you, be you, therewith content. Be content where you are. What's that, what's that really saying? He's saying be grateful right where you are. Today, each of you already have air to breathe. You have food to eat. You have a place to sleep, whether you own it or you borrow it from somebody. It doesn't matter. You have a place to sleep that's safe. You have health insurance. You have sunny skies. You have friends. You have birds playing in the yard. You have no war in San Francisco. Putin's not attacking San Francisco. Not burning up our buildings here in our town, like is happening in Ukraine. We have no tsunamis flooding our beach house. We had one back in January, flooded some of Santa Cruz, but none of these things are impinging upon us. It's pretty nice what we got. The sun's out there. So be grateful for what you got. Now, sometimes it's hard to be grateful to say, but, but I really need a car. I really got to have that new car. I just, I just got to have that. And we really you know, have this desire to acquire. So try another way. Be grateful for what you don't have. When it's hard to be grateful, be grateful for what you don't have. Rather than being depressed because you don't have the new car, be grateful instead because you don't have a car. Be grateful that you don't have a car instead of being depressed about it. You don't have to worry about finding a parking place, no car to park. You don't have to save money to buy new tires for that car because the tires you got on it are wearing out. You don't have to buy insurance. You don't have to have a driver's license. You, you don't have to have that car. Look at all the savings. Look at all the wonderful things you'd be grateful for by not having the car instead of worrying about, I don't have a car. Be grateful for what you don't have. Be grateful that you don't have a new girlfriend and you have to go buy flowers for her because then you have to go to the store and buy the flowers. And you, you don't have to do that. You don't have that problem because you don't have the new girlfriend or the new boyfriend or whatever, whatever you want. If you can look at the other side and be grateful for what you don't have, you have peace of mind. You don't have to worry about these things. You, you want to have a house. Be grateful you don't have a house. You don't have a mortgage. You don't have taxes. You don't have to buy insurance so that the guy that falls down in your steps can sue you. I mean, you don't have all these problems that come with the house. You don't have to put a new roof on. You don't have to paint the siding. You know, you want to go playing around, but you got to stay home and paint the siding this Saturday because your house looks lousy and you got to fix it. You don't have those problems. So be grateful you don't have a house instead of being depressed because you don't have a house. It's a choice. You know, I have that little phrase that I have in my window. It says, it's all good. If you can look at everything is good, including I didn't get to eat dinner tonight. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, if you're trying to lose weight, it's probably a good thing. Didn't get to eat dinner tonight. You can be grateful for anything. If you are mindful enough to look for the cherry, to look for the, the, the good in everything, no matter how bad it may seem to other people, it could be a really good thing. It might even be a good thing to get COVID. I haven't figured out how that works, but that could be. Uh, it might save you from something else. I don't know. Everything has in it a seed of good, if you can just find it. So along with that, the contentment that St. Paul is talking about, be content with everything. 
The contentment requires forgiveness. You need to forgive yourself. You need to forgive yourself for not being the overachiever that your parents thought you should be. And realize that your parents were just trying to live out their frustration, their frustrated dreams and desires through your life and through your achievements. Parents like to brag, I didn't go to college, but, but my kid, he graduated from college. And it's all because I'm such a good parent and I paid for his college for him. Yeah, but they never realize that they pushed and forced that son that graduated from college or their daughter that graduated from college to get those good grades and get through school. And they had to study that whole time and do all of that. And it might not even have gotten them a good job. The parents pushed them to do that because the parents really wanted to go to college themselves. But what did the parent do when it was time to go to college? Ah, they just went fishing. They didn't have to go study and push hard. Yeah, it's too much bother. I don't want to study hard. I don't want to have to learn math in order to make it through college. So I think I'll go fishing. And that's what the parents did. And now they're frustrated because they didn't do it. So they want to push their child to do it. You, the child, have to forgive yourself for not being the overachiever that your parents wanted to turn you into. Okay, so your parents may not like the fact that you forgave yourself and now you're not going to finish college either because you got something better to do. Forgive yourself. Don't require so much of yourself. Don't push yourself so hard. Allow yourself to relax. Allow yourself to enjoy life. Um, and maybe if Will Smith had forgiven Chris Rock, Today, Will Smith would still be making those four movies and all those millions of dollars that he just tossed out the window for two seconds worth of I'll show you. Is I show you worth that much? I'll show you. I don't think it's worth anything. It just makes you feel bad. And I'm sure Chris, or excuse me, Will Smith feels bad now. And maybe if Putin had forgiven the Ukraine for liking democracy better than communism, and wishing to join the West, then Putin wouldn't now have to be scrambling to keep his presidency in the failed Russian economy that he's created. So both of these guys crashed and burned for one little mistaken idea, not being able to be mindful and look for the, the strawberry or the cherry that's in everything. There's good in everything. And it's all about how you look at it. If I could just have a car, everything would be fine. Or if I just had a car, you know, I'm, I'm so grateful I don't have a car because I don't have to buy insurance and new tires and worry about does it run and find a place to park. And my friends want to borrow my car. I don't want to do that. You know, all of that doesn't happen because we don't have the car. Look at everything that comes into your life, every challenge, every struggle, Look for the good that's in it and how you can change your perspective, change the way you look at it. Maybe I don't need a car. Maybe I don't need that house. Maybe all I need is a friend that I can rent a room from or, or whatever we do and be happy where we are. And then be grateful and say, hey, I'm glad I get to rent that couch that I'm renting over at Joe's house. I mean, I'm glad that I can do that. I'm so grateful that life treats me so well. And then we can just sit in the sun, we have to put on our SP50, but be grateful for the SPF50 that you can put on a sun cream that'll keep you from getting sunburned. And lay in the sun and enjoy ourselves and enjoy life and be happy that we have another day to sit in the sun. It's all about how you choose to look at a thing and you can make up your mind to look at it that this is the best thing that ever happened. I don't have any money. I don't have a car. I don't have a house. And yet I get to eat. I got a place to sleep. The world is wonderful. I don't have COVID this morning. Nobody's bombing San Francisco. You can always find a hundred things to be grateful for. Even somebody walking their dog, instead of saying, oh, that dog's gonna crap on my front lawn. <laughs> 
you say, oh, what a cute dog. It's how you look at life. You can always find something you don't like. You can always find something you do like. Gail and I, we go walking, we go to the park, and we pick up trash. Now, some people say, oh, that's a lot of work. That's trouble. We look at it as something to do while we're walking. You know, it's something to do. It's, it's something we're given the, the opportunity to do something. Most people think, oh, I don't want to do something. I, that's hard work. No, it's not hard work. It's what you're made for. And if you continue to work your body and do things, you'll stay healthy. You'll have muscles. You'll have, you know, health. Health comes from doing things. Health does not come from sitting on your butt, not doing things. So you have to look at everything differently. That's the way to do it. Choose to look differently at things. That's how Apple built their success, doing it differently. So that's my, what I wanted to say today is when you look at the news and you see these terrible things happen, I think what, what happened to Will Smith is horrible, just terrible. If he just could have held on. I think what Putin is doing is terrible, but each of them could have changed their view and been different. And maybe if, if uh, Putin had said to Ukraine, go ahead, become a democracy, join the West, Ukraine would still be happy being Russia's neighbor and they'd still have a lot of business going on. And, you know, you got to look at what life could be and then help that happen by changing your view and seeing everything is good every time. And sometimes that takes a lot of courage and you just have to find that courage and look at everything as good. This is good. This is wonderful. That's what I got for you today. Thank you very much.